off. This next project in my 8x8 Junk and Disorderly Art Journal and this is a piece of £140 or 300 GSM watercolour cardstock that's been cut to 8 inches by 8 inches. And I have a snowflake stencil from Indigo Blue. Uh, I haven't put anything on this paper at all yet so there's been no gesso or anything on this watercolour cardstock so I'm just going to place the stencil down on there and I have a pot of heavy carvable modelling paste from um, Windsor and Newton. I'm just going to take out some of that modelling paste to place it onto my craft mat and then I'm going to just carefully just scrape that through and I'm not particularly bothered if this is perfect I just want to get some of those snowflake shapes just down onto the page but I'm leaving a gap here I don't want a full snowflake there so just part of the pattern will be fine and that will do and I can just peel that off and you can see that lovely texture that we have on the page just there look and then I can just remove a little bit from the top round the edges it's going to be a kind of wintry Christmassy themed page but instead of using traditional Christmassy colours I'm going to go for cool blues with a pop of red so I need to get that dry so I'm going to grab my heat gun and then I'll be right back when it's done now that the modelling paste is dry I can start to add a little bit of colour into the page. Now I've pulled out an old pot of Grandma's Teacup uh, English Cottage Artist Acrylic Paint from Indigo Blue and you can see it's a really nice kind of Wedgwoody blue colour. So I'm going to just take a little bit of this blue paint probably take that bit from the lid actually so we're not wasting any and I'm going to place it down onto um, my craft mat and I'm going to just spritz it with a little bit of water just to get it moving just mix it up first so it's nice and fluid and then I'm just going to bring that paint in and I'm just going to add that paint across the middle like so and then while it's still wet I'm going to hit it with that spritz bottle And then I'm going to let it run back. And then run down again. Add a little bit more water just to get it to run further down. And I'll just turn it so you can see it. And I'm going to lay that flat. Grab some kitchen towel and then I'm just going to grab and mop that up Okay. 
going to pop some of that from the edges and then I'm going to hit that with the heat gun and dry that in place. Now that the light blue paint has dried you can really see that embossing um, paste on that page. It really does bring those snowflakes to life but I want to add a little bit more grunge to this page. So now I'm going to bring out a darker blue. This is the Park Lane and you can see just how dark this paint is. And I'm just going to give it a quick shake up so it's been in my pot in my drawer for quite some time. So I just want to take a small amount of that paint. Don't want a lot. And again I'm going to spritz that with water and when this park lane starts to um, because it's quite pigment rich even with a lot of water it still maintain that, that nice colour and there's a, a kind of purpley tinge to this dark blue so what I want to do now is I'll get rid of that big brush now and pull in my fan brush and I want to start adding some splatters to the page. Just kind of diffusing that colour. Just here. like that. Just like that. Like an old British comedian used to say. Okay let's just give that a quick wipe and then I'm going to hit that with the heat gun and get that dried. So that park lane has now dried thoroughly. Absolutely lovely. I love the contrast between that light and the dark but to just knock that down a little bit I have some snow white indigo blue metallic paint again so this is metallic white or shiny white if you like so I'm just going to take a little bit of that metallic paint add a little bit to my craft mat and then a little bit of water not a lot just to kind of get a nice kind of thinnish milky consistency but I don't want it too thick so I've got a big lump of it there got it just what's breaking up that's it so it's watered down and then I'm just going to go over the top horizontal and vertical strokes just adding in a little bit of that sparkle over the top and that will just tone down those darker areas you've still got the darks in there but they're not quite as dark dark so we're still getting that same kind of um, two-tone effect but instead it's just not quite as what's the phrase I'm looking for oh yeah in your face <laughs> let's get that dried okay now that that snow white has dried let me lift the page up and just show you how that's given that page a really nice kind of subtle so there looks dark and then when you catch the light you've got a lovely kind of shimmer that just brings that page to life love it love it to bits okay so next we need to add in some collage items i have um an image from the tim holtz um what do they call these oh let me get the box it's the found relatives and it's the occasions one so this is the well obviously this is a Christmassy kind of image but I've also taken just a couple of pieces 
from the um, festive, I think they call it. Let me just double check. This is grabbing the rest of the pack. Yeah, the festive ephemera pack. So I'm just taking a couple of pieces. So, well, three pieces to be a few then, not a couple, a few. Uh, I'm going to glue these down, but before I do so, I want to just add a little bit of paint to them. So I'm just going to see if I can grab a sponge, I've got some cosmetic sponges somewhere. Yep, yeah, there's one. And I've got some white gesso. So just shake the gesso up so I've got some on the lid. There we go. I've got a big bubble on the lid, look. Shall we get rid? There we go. Even get sound effects as well, look. There's one in the pot. Hoodie. Haha. <laughs> Fun. Right, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of white gesso. And I'm just going to add a kind of whitish border with that gesso to the top. The reason I'm not going to add any to the bottom part is because that's going to get tucked behind. So I'll grab some more. And this one, add that to the top. You can just run that down if we want, just down the side. Looks good to me. And then this one also, just run that down there. And then the main image, I also want just to add a little bit of that white. Just down there. So not a lot. Okay, so I just need to make sure that all these pieces are dry. So I'm just going to give them a quick blast with the heat gun and I'll be right back. So all the edges of my little cluster pieces are all stuck, well not stuck down, sorry, they're all dry. Um, I haven't stuck any of this down just yet. I've just laid them down just because I wanted to work out placement because I'm going to add some washi tape under all this as well. So I needed to work out exactly where this was going to go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tear off some pieces like here and I'm going to just drop it down like so and then I can lay that back where I want it to go and then I can work out exactly where the next piece is that I want to go. So I want to put another piece there. So that's going to go, try and do it so it's straight. I want that to go underneath again. One more piece to go up here underneath this lot. So that will go about there. So that can come down, that can come down, that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. Think one more piece just about there. Now I could probably got the same effect with stamping um, but I like the washi tape um, and it just gives it a kind of um, more of a clustered feel to it anyway. Right so glue wise I'm going to use my Colol multi-purpose glue, which is exactly the same as the Tombow Mono Liquid. It's just trying to hold it steady. So this is the Colol multi-purpose spirit glue. This is the same thing. This is what we can get over in the UK and over in Europe. This is probably easy to get if you're in the States uh, or Canada. It's the same thing. It just smells slightly different, but it does exactly the same thing. 
Okay, so let's just take those two bits off first. And then we'll work out how these clusters are going to go. Yeah, we had them like so, like that. Down a bit. So that first one is going to go there. And taking the lid off, look. And we are not safe to be let out. Now, the beauty of this glue is that it does have wiggle room. There's plenty of time for wiggle room. So I'll just take that over that way. So as long as we've got Christmas spirit showing, that's fine. And then I'll move that over a little bit and that can come down there. So happy with that. with this today. About there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then we can stick down the main big picture, our main focal image. Like so, and then we have our big December the 25th. We'll glue all of it, it's leaked out the side. It always does that when the bottles start to run out, but hey ho. And then that can sit just there. just with that little pop of colour. Got a little bit of red there, a little bit of red there, and we're going to leave the rest exactly as it is. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to dry for a few minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, so the final touch for this is, I mentioned stamping earlier. Now, I've got a really deep blue, which is a nice cobalt from Ranger Archival, so it means it's permanent. And I also have this um, Towards the Night Before Christmas script stamp from Indigo Blue, which is part of their uh, Spirit of Christmas set, um, which you can find on their website. Um, and I'm just going to ink it up with the blue. Not safe to be let out. I've already said that once, haven't I? Well, it just proves, doesn't it? So I'm now going to just do that down at the bottom. Now I know that obviously I'm stamping over a slippery surface, but I just want to do it one more over at the top here. And I'm also stamping over um, embossing paste. So I don't want to get a perfect impression just want to get it so it just looks like it's showing through and I think a little bit just again just there so that's like a second generation stamp and I think I'm going to leave that I'm happy with that page now so all I need to do is just to sign it and date it just get rid of that piece of washi tape that seems to have appeared from nowhere and I'm going to sign it just quickly underneath uh, sign and date it I'm going to call this page complete <laughs>